Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So guys, here we have it, the cryptic poet on Twitter. Don't forget this tweet. He retweeted out a tweet that he uh, originally tweeted on uh, January the 23rd. It's not a bull market until Bitcoin breaks and holds above $26,000. And as you guys can see in this uh, video here, Bitcoin was moving up at that time, January the 23rd. Uh, since then, of course, we did see a tumultuous time on the Bitcoin chart. Uh, and then over the weekend, we did recover Bitcoin back up past $26,000. So I guess that means technically we are in a bull market, according to uh, the cryptic poet here. We did reach that high for Bitcoin, 26000 almost $26,500 on Tuesday. Uh, today is Wednesday and we are down a little bit here. Let me throw that on the hourly just to show you guys. We are correcting a little bit here, uh, albeit a healthy correction. Even within this correction, we can see we are making higher lows. So hopefully now we make higher highs and uh, stay above that $26,000 mark. Let me put it back on the daily uh, just to show you guys. So $26,000 breaking through uh, 25,100, which was forming resistance since about August of 2022. Uh, you guys can see that here. We did form that resistance back in uh, late February. This was also old support that was forming back in May of 2022. As you guys can see down here, uh, the chart did wick down, but now we've broken above that. And uh, hopefully after, uh, you know, this correction, after we see some movement post correction, we do see uh, a maintained sustained Bitcoin price of above $26,000 per coin. We've also got Dark Defender here uh, talking about the XRP chart and posting this, retweeting out his February 5th tweet. And if you look down to this February 5th tweet, what he did was he took uh, a partial bars pattern here, taking a look at where we were at back in early February, XRP trading higher than it is today. And he basically said, you know, you're not going to like this tweet, but he was expecting XRP to come back down into this support level. Well, fast forward to today or uh, this week. And he says we are on target for that February 5th price, even though most did not like his prediction. So I'm just going to bring up the XRP chart real quickly here. And I already have the uh, the bars pattern aligned here. Let me just get that, uh, show you guys that zoomed out here. Okay, so what he is suggesting is, so I took this bars pattern uh, from all the way back here. Essentially what he's suggesting is that we are formulating the same kind of pattern. And if you guys take a look at this, you guys can see this pattern very, very similar to what we are seeing today. And we were in and around here. And if I zoom in here, you guys can see we were in and around here when he originally tweeted that out. So we were up here. What he did say was we were going to come right back down to 36, which we did essentially. We are there pretty much right now. So um, let me just see if I can take that off there. We're down in here, 37, 36, 37. Uh, and I should reiterate, he did tweet that up here when we were near 40, 41 cents. Let me throw that back on. So what he is suggesting is basically next move up is to 56 cents, guys, which would be the next move in this fractal pattern. That would bring us up here. Of course, we would need to break through that resistance. But, uh, you know, if we were to follow the fractal pattern, it would come back down one more time before we really shot off into the stratosphere. And if I zoom out here, uh, you guys can see I even threw a uh, Fibonacci on here. This would essentially match up, bringing us the first pump close to all-time high to what we saw back in January of 2018. And then finally, the final move, guys, completing a full Fibonacci retracement, bringing $13 and change back into play here. Even if I bring it up to the top, we would see a price of about $15.46. So these are the predictions that uh, we were assuming would happen back in 2020 and 2021. We never saw XRP go that high. However, uh, you know, it's looking more and more likely that uh, this now is the fractal pattern that we should be paying attention to. Anyway, an interesting uh, observation here from Dark Defender and the crypto market, guys. Moving in such an interesting way uh, since this SVB bank collapse signature, all that stuff has been happening. Crypto Nova here posting this. A lot has happened over the weekend that changed the macro environment completely. Here are five reasons why the bull market may be back. So not only has Bitcoin surpassed 26,000, there are other reasons why uh, we should be paying attention and we are likely seeing a bull market. Crypto reacted extremely bullish today to the news that the Fed providing liquidity again after the failure of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. The volatility is due to failure of one bank and the forced shutting of another. So we got the Fed, they're bailing out depositors. Yesterday, the Fed announced that the bank term funding program depositors will have access to all their money starting on Monday. This decision effectively marks the return to Fed liquidity injections, also called 
quantitative easing. Uh, for those who don't know what that means, instead of pulling money out of the economy, they are injecting money back in. This basically means putting the money printer back on. So uh, essentially what they were doing throughout 2020 and throughout 2021 uh, amidst beer flu lockdowns, they were, you know, I injecting money into the economy. And that was, uh, you know, giving opportunities for many people. And that's why we saw crypto and other markets rallying during that time. Let me bring up the total crypto market here, uh, just to give you guys a visual markets were rallying throughout this point, uh, because the money printer was just going full speed. This is uh, the total market cap. Even if I just bring up the S and P 500, you guys can see that trend very, very similar, uh, beer flu shutdown, obviously, here and then boom look at that 2020 2021 uh basically a spending spree so bullish for risk on assets and then uh, crypto nova gives uh, an explanation down here another tweet that she tweeted out back in october then the fed interest rate pivot goldman sachs economist jan hatzius this is what he said in light of the stress in the banking system we are no longer expecting fomc to deliver a rate hike at its next meeting on march the 22nd as interest rates are usually bearish this means temporary relief uh, number six, we got Bitcoin huge price jump. Bitcoin jumped more than 20% over the weekend. The Fed liquidity announcement entirely erased any trace of the SVB implosion. The market reaction itself is already promising on its own. Uh, and then we've got USDC regain the $1 peg, as I was uh, talking about over the weekend. I never thought I would be doing technical analysis on a stable coin, but sure enough, there I was talking about the price of USDC. Uh, we talked a little bit about it regaining its peg after the collapse of SBB. The second largest stablecoin lost its peg, but Monday morning it was uh, entirely regained. Uh, then we have Binance. Binance buys $1 billion worth of crypto assets. While this technically doesn't have an effect on turning the market bullish or bearish, it does provide buy pressure. Binance had $1 billion worth of assets in their own stablecoin. So due to the recent changes in banks and stables, they decided to convert this mainly to Bitcoin, Ethereum, and BNB coin. $1 billion isn't a low amount. Uh, the buy pressure has certainly moved the market a bit. So guys, market looking bullish uh, for many different reasons, and uh, hopefully we can keep this momentum up. We've also got some news with regards to crypto lawsuits in particular. We know John Deaton uh, was heading up another class action for Ethereum holders. Well, over a thousand Ethereum holders have joined this class action lawsuit. And just to reiterate, if you guys do hold Ethereum, uh, you may want to sign up for this. Ethereum is not a security. This is the statement uh, that Ethereum holders are making to the SEC. Well, there's no direct regulatory threat to Ethereum at the moment allegations from officials in the lawsuit if left unchecked could create trouble in the future in addition to ethereum the prosecutor's statement also mentioned luna and ust so john deaton has uh, preemptively uh started this and uh only a thousand holders have signed up uh, compared to seventy five thousand xrp holders nevertheless it really is apples and oranges because uh there is no imminent threat as this article does point out uh to ethereum being classified a security yet I mean, that might change. And so uh, John Deaton is just getting prepared. Uh, so I thought I'd mention that thanks to XRP Crypto Wolf. Another one here from John Deaton and his interview with J.W. Verrett. J.W. gives his opinion on the SEC and their underestimation of the Ripple lawsuit and the Ripple verdict. Here's his opinion on the matter. Listen to this. Our guest is no other than the great J.W. Verrett. And J.W., welcome to Crypto Law. I appreciate it. Do you, have, do you have an opinion as to why uh, the SEC picked the fight with Ripple? I mean, Ripple's well-funded. You know, uh, Brad Garlinghouse has said publicly that when all said and done, it would be $100 million in legal fees. That's pretty steep. Well, I, yeah, I don't think they saw that coming. And uh, I, I think they probably expected there would be a settlement. And I think they underestimated the fight inside of Brad. Uh, there's a lot of sand We've learned. I've learned. There's a lot of sand inside that fella, and I admire that. Uh, well, and he's doing a service for everyone in crypto. Let uh, me ask we all you. to shake his hand. Let, let me ask you, JW. Do you think that the courts will be able to rein in the SEC before they do too much damage? Um, they're gonna they're gonna continue to do some damage. Uh, we'll see if. If maybe uh, we have more luck quickly on overturning rule proposals, if they move forward with the, with the reg ATS proposal, that's an attack on DeFi. I think we'll quickly see a challenge to that. Uh, the token by token cases like Wahi and like Ripple um, 
are just going to be long slogs, and they're going to continue to bring them. I just hope that more people are willing to fight. And, uh, you know, I, we'll see what happens with Coinbase. The, the rumors of the SEC circling around. and But Coinbase is also big and, and strong and, and has some sand in them. So uh, maybe they won't make a full-on run at Coinbase. Hopefully they won't. Um, I, I don't know that I ha in the short term, it's just more pain. So unfortunately, more pain in the short term before we see some long term results. JW Verrett, though, positive on uh, some of the bigger companies, Ripple, Coinbase, of course, and the individual coins. It's going to be a long slog. Um, you know, basically, we're in it for the long haul, guys. But, uh, you know, fortunate for XRP hodlers, of course, as we've been talking about, uh, Ripple is already, you know, one of the first ones that had been attacked by the SEC. And so we're going to get a resolution a lot sooner than, uh, you know, some of these other cryptocurrencies. ISO 20022 posted this, a brand new document here, offline CBDC payments. And Ripple is mentioned here, guys, as one of the best tech providers for offline CBDCs. So take a look at this. The vast majority of central banks around the globe are working to launch a digital version of their currency. This was a report uh, put out by Idemia. I've got the report up here if you guys are uh, interested in perusing. Uh, you know, they talk a little bit about offline CBDC, central bank digital currencies. Uh, something that piques, I think, a lot of our interests, uh, considering we've also heard, uh, you know, rumblings from Klaus Schwab that there could be a huge breakdown of the electrical grid and we could be plunged into darkness. Right. So, of course, you know, if they do implement a central bank digital currency, it does have to be able to work offline. Well, some of the solutions that they've mentioned here, integrated with the best CBDC solution providers, the best central bank digital currency solution providers are working with IDEMIA. This allows central banks to be able to use secure offline payments, no matter the supplier they are using. Note here, guys, the HBAR Foundation built on Hedera and Ripple here. Obviously, HBAR and XRP, two coins that are in my investment portfolio. They also mentioned BIT. Uh, Mtech, Perfinal, Polygon, and Prosperous. But again, these names keep popping up. Ripple, uh, of course, the associated cryptocurrency XRP, Hedera, and their associated cryptocurrency HBAR. Coins to be paying attention to. Uh, these are some options for offline payments. Flip the switch down here saying, sounds like offline payments are working. Didn't Neil from ODL say that you can only verify a payment QR code offline and one counterparty needs to access the internet? Not sure about the technicals. Uh, as you guys know, uh, the technicals are not uh, necessarily what I'm focusing on. It's more about the adoption, the solutions, what coins are going to be valuable, where the value is going to be driven, and which coins to invest in, of course. So great news there from ISO 2022. Uh, DJ Peter Vass here pointing this out. XRP Ledger's Ethereum compatible sidechain is now accessible for testnet. So more developments on the XRP Ledger as well. Ripple X just announced this. The Ethereum virtual machine compatible XRPL sidechain is available on testnet and brings all kinds of Web3 applications to the blockchain community. So you guys can see uh, the tweet down here just referencing that. He also posts a link down here. Check out the intro built on XRP. If you guys remember back in October, software company Pierces announced the release of their first phase of the EVM sidechain for the XRPL, which was launched on the XRPL DevNet. Phase two of the project features a permissionless EVM sidechain and bridge that connects the XRPL DevNet to test scalability in a controlled environment. At the end of the three-phase development, a permissionless EVM sidechain and bridge will be available on the XRPL mainnet. Uh, Ripple CTO David Schwartz believes bringing Ethereum smart contracts to the XRP ledger will lower the barrier to entry for developers wanting to build apps with cross-chain interoperability. And so interoperability, of course, the name of the game, especially considering this crypto revolution, this crypto world is still emerging, still coming into its own. So, you know, these companies, uh, you know, still trying to find their footing and uh, you want to make these blockchains as interoperable as possible. And this is why, you know, another positive point, another check uh, in the XRPL column, wanting to remain interoperable, don't want to block off any kind of, uh, you know, future possibilities uh, for developing on the XRP ledger and for it to be able to interoperate with other cryptocurrency projects that may see true value in the future. So, you know, the EVM sidechain, uh, that has been a big development, a side development on the XRP ledger, and uh, now it is available in testnet form. So I wanted to thank DJ Peter Vass for pointing that out. Uh, we've also got some VeChain news here, guys, from the cryptic poet VeChain partner, DB Shanker, implements groundbreaking automated e-commerce logistics hub in Spain. 
Another groundbreaking partnership here, guys, for VeChain, cutting-edge autonomous mobile robot technology installed in record time for fulfillment in Spain, Portugal, and France, creating 150 new jobs and sustainability standards. DB Schenker, a leading supply chain management and logistics service provider, opened operations at one of the largest automated e-commerce facilities, servicing its retail customers in Spain, Portugal, and France. So supply chain management, this is, uh, you know, one of the things that VeChain does really, really well. This is a 50,000 square meter state-of-the-art warehouse in Guadalajara, and they started with 150 employees and newly created jobs and more than 200 robots, guys, uh, and optimizing their packaging system. The site is equipped with goods-to-person picking systems to handle around 55,000 units per day using autonomous mobile robots uh, and also running on the VeChain platform. So, you know, another great partnership here, driving utility to the VET token. Wanted to thank the Cryptic Poet for posting that. Also happened to see this, guys, another Ripple partner, ACI World. Worldwide. We talked about them the other day. Well, they're really ramping up on the partnerships. Mike Manfield bringing this to our attention. ACI Worldwide teams up with Red Abirta to power real-time payments in Honduras. So looking towards uh, Central America, South America, the global leader in mission-critical real-time payment software today announced a partnership with financial technology company Red Abirta. I think that's how that's pronounced, to power real-time payments in Honduras. Red Abirta, uh, the central infrastructure provider in Honduras, will leverage two ACI solutions, ACI Enterprise Payment Platforms and ACI Low Value Real-Time Payments, to build the domestic real-time payment central infrastructure in the Central American country and help financial institutions connect to the new scheme. And again, guys, ACI is uh, Ripple enabled, and uh, these guys are using this specifically for payments in Honduras, expected to go live in quarter two of 2023, so just around the corner. The scheme will enable banks and other financial institutions to offer new digital payment services to customers. By launching real-time payments in Honduras, participating financial institutions and payment service providers aim to drive economic growth and promote financial inclusion among large parts of the underbanked populations in Honduras. So, uh, you know, all things that uh, are mission specific to Ripple. We've heard them in the past talk about banking the unbanked and uh, leveraging partners like ACI to be able to do so. Uh, and so here we're seeing it, guys. We're seeing it come to fruition in Honduras, where there is an underbanked population that does need the support. And guys, here's just a quick quote. Our partnership with ACI Worldwide will allow us to strengthen the region's digital economy by facilitating modernization and innovation in the payment ecosystem. Uh, they go on to say ACI's experience, technology, and global presence have enabled us to design a modern and robust platform that will offer an unprecedented range of new digital payment services and allow for regional interoperability in the future. So again, going back to that interoperable uh, aspect, of course, running on RippleNet ACI can indeed interoperate with uh, other blockchains if need be. So amazing news, Ripple partnership news, the secondary tertiary partnerships are what is getting this off the ground. Mike Manfield down here uh, also uh, mentioning that ACI does support 9% of global SWIFT traffic and approximately 30% in the United States. ACI offers services to banks around the world wanting to connect uh, to and leverage the SWIFT Global Payment Initiative or SWIFT GPI. So uh, that's another uh, interesting uh, tidbit here coming from ACI. ACI also supports real-time schemes around the world, meaning that any bank can use real-time payment systems like Swift Fin GPI DLT, example Ripple, and Wire Immediate Payments. So, um, you know, these companies are just getting more powerful, more robust, stronger, able to compete against the incumbent, all by leveraging Ripple technology. So I wanted to thank Mike Manfield there for posting that. And guys, did you happen to see this from King Solomon here on Twitter? Nothing to see here, he says facetiously, just the Royal Bank of Canada in 2023. So guys, this is brand new publicized a patent showing a crypto user platform. So check this out, guys. Users of the platform may send and receive individual crypto assets to other members on the platform. In an example scenario, there is no on-chain transactions, only an update to a database-driven larger system. The crypto assets remain dormant in a cold storage. However, the balances in the database-driven ledger system get updated to reflect each user's individual allotment. Uh, so no on-chain transactions for this specifically, it kind of harkens back to that uh, article here, offline CBDC payments, uh, not on chain, wondering what they're planning here. Uh, they give an example of user A wants to send user B a variety of crypto assets. User A would need to initialize multiple crypto asset transfer requests. Uh, to simplify the process, user A can generate a basket of crypto assets. This basket can be transferred as an individual unit type. And uh, as you guys can see here, the four cryptocurrencies that are allotted in the basket at equal amounts, 25% are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, 
and Ripple. The current assignee, the Royal Bank of Canada guys, and the publication date uh, late January 2023 down here. So the status is still pending. Then I should probably tell you guys this. The biggest bank in Canada is the Royal Bank of Canada. They are the largest of the big five. If you guys uh, do not know, Canada has five banks. They're called the big five, but of the big five, Royal Bank of Canada is the largest uh, with respect to net revenue, $11.4 billion in 2020 and capitalization of about $132.5 billion in 2020. So guys, a huge move here, Royal Bank of Canada with this patent involving a user basket creation, 25% will include XRP. It's all part and parcel to where this is all going. That's just my opinion. But I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.